I'm sure some of you have heard me recall <coughs> the situation where Wittgenstein was raving about something and one of his students said, but is it the truth? And he said, well, it's true enough. <laughs> and uh, this is really a, means a great divide has been crossed when you can say that because it means you understand now that you are no longer a, a, a fairy in a platonic super world, but that you are actually a monkey with a brain full of mush trying to sort out, uh, you know, what's right in front of you. True enough <laughs> is, is what we should probably rest with. It, it's amazing to me. I mean, if you were to meet a termite who stated that his or her uh, goal in life was the perfect modeling of the cosmos, you would think it was quite a comic undertaking. Uh, and yet, how different are we that we should presume uh, uh, to more than a shadow of, of uh, a shadow of the truth? Well, then, uh, finally, or I don't know, finally, but completing my laundry list here, um, linguistic truth or the truth of language and the illusions that language weaves. Because uh, someone quite intelligent said uh, language was invented so that people could lie. In other words, it, it gives you that fudge factor of obfuscation where someone says, you know, why did you do that? Well, the best approach is, I didn't do that. You know, you, you thought I did that. What you thought you saw, you didn't see. In other words, uh, I suppose the, uh, that uh, lawyers are probably the people who have done the finest work with language uh, and, and behind them politicians and the true potential for language to elevate and to unite the community was early on betrayed into the production of, um, of illusion, illusory and ideological goods which could then be marketed among the people and uh, to spread confusion. Psychedelics reflect on this because psychedelics stretch and pull and melt and recast the illusion producing machinery of language. I mean, I think that if you had to say the one thing that psychedelics do for everyone, whether they have a good trip or a bad trip, because it's up to them to interpret what they make of this, is it shows you the relativity of your cultural viewpoint. You know, that it's just, a, it's just your point of view. You inherited it from a, a, geolo a geographical area, a culture, a set of parents. It has no relationship whatsoever to anything anchored in some kind of metaphysical superspace. It's just your cultural point of view. And travel actually does the same thing. And I've always felt there was a weird affinity between psychedelics and travel. And I suppose many people have, or we wouldn't call it a trip. And, uh, you know, we wouldn't call it a journey. But travel shows you the relativity of culture. And what's really happening when you travel, you see, is you're moving from one language domain to another. We don't think of it that way, but that is in fact what is happening. You can never see the Amazon jungle if you keep intact the bubble of linguistic assumptions of the place you started out from. Every place will withhold its secrets from you. I learned this in the Amazon because the first time I went, I had virtually no botany. And to me, the jungle was green. That's what it was. And it was many shades of green, and it was beautiful, and it was this and that, but it was basically green. 
the second time I went, I was with a, a lot of botanists. And within days, you know, you learn the families. That's how they do it. With the same taxonomy I'm here applying to illusion was really developed to describe plants and animals. So you learn the families, the plants with square stems, the plants with the opposed leaves, the plants uh, with the particular flower structure. Once you know families, then you have a linguistic wedge in. Uh, but, you know, the, cur the, the corrupting or curious thing about language is that like all tools, it shapes its user in ways that are not suspected until it's too late. So, uh, in, for instance, the way in which Western civilization is totally obsessed with the subject-object relationship, you know, and it's the basis of our science, our polity, our relations to commerce, the concept of product, all of these things come out of the subject-object relationship, which is an aspect of language. Uh, in the, so I, I point all this out because uh, in talking about my new book, somebody said that I had gone too far. <laughs> and I was amused because it implied from what, you know? It's not like there is a King's X where uh, gray beards in white coats tend the sacred vestal fires of reality. <laughs> there is no reality. There are only people who know this and people who don't know this and are therefore being manipulated by the people who do know it. <laughs> this is true or true enough. <laughs> hey there, thanks for listening. Wizards of Word is a passion project of mine, and every like, comment, and subscribe really helps the channel out. If you enjoy this video or get something from it, please consider smashing that like button or giving a subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. Thanks.